Uh, our first speaker is Gabriel Calzada, Dr. Gabriel. Uh, he's been an associate professor of economics at King Juan Carlos University in Spain since 2004. Since 2007, he has been in charge of the applied economics courses at the environmental science faculty. He's also an associate professor of economics at IE University and visiting professor at Universidad Francisco Marroquin in Guatemala. Uh, Dr. Uh, Calzada has uh, written and spoken extensively on the effects of um, the green agenda on job creation. We've heard a lot of extremely extravagant and charming numbers about how many green jobs are going to be created by um, government uh, regulation and the uh, uh, attempts to um, change the uh, climate. Uh, Dr. Calzada has, has uh, applied the uh, science to it and found what the facts really are. And his uh, conclusions have been uh, both startling and impressive. I uh, introduce to you Dr. Gabriel Calzada. Thank you. Thank you. Today we, will go, we are going to hear many more extravagant things. Um, well, what I'm going to tell you is a little bit the story of um, the study I presented last year and what has happened after uh, the, the, the study. You might have heard about the study. Well, we, I will speak a little bit about it, but especially about what happened after it. Uh, well, you know, the, the, the green eggs consists in what Obama, Duro Barroso, and Zapatero said that renewable energy can create millions of additional jobs and entire new industries, according to Obama. Barroso says that public support to renewable is an opportunity that should create thousands of new businesses and millions of jobs in Europe, and we must grasp this opportunity. And Zapatero says that investment in green energy creates jobs and is the way out of the crisis. This is very important because the claim is it will create jobs and it will bring us out of the crisis, sort of stimulus green package. Well, the, the, the issue with this is that you have to be very careful when you speak about creating jobs because there are many ways of creating jobs. You can create jobs in a, in a variety of, of ways and the important thing is to be productive. These, these jobs have to be productive. Um, otherwise, you might end up saying that uh, producing fans is, is a sort of green job. For example, in this way. And, uh, it's certainly not the best, the, the most productive way to use uh, labor uh, in order to produce electricity. Um, another an additional problem with this, uh, we have to be careful, is uh, if, especially if you put it together with the first problem, is, well, especially in renewable energy, you don't see many, uh, if you have been to, to a wind plant or a solar plant, you don't see many, many, many workers there. Uh, where are the workers? Where? Well, they have been there. They have been installing the plants. And there are many workers installing the plants. And uh, this, is, this is very funny or very curious because uh, when you see comparative analysis, international comparative analysis uh, in different energies, uh, you find that uh, renewable energies, uh, the, the jobs that they create, about 60% are, are in installation and they are speaking about mainly those jobs, but when they speak, when, when these studies speak about uh, conventional uh, electricity production, installation of plants are not counted as jobs. So it is very, very curious comparative analysis what you see um, out there. So where are the jobs? Well, in installation mainly, 60% of them. And uh, this, this creates some problem. If you want to keep these jobs, you need to install many more plants. And if you install many more plants and you have subsidy for the production, you will have many more subsidies. So in, in a way of, in a sort of py, uh, pyramid or, or bubble. So what's the solution to these two problems? Well, uh, President Obama said that uh, think of what's happening in countries like Spain. And uh, we did. We look at uh, what was going on in Spain. We were looking already when Obama said this. And in fact, we, we, we looked very carefully uh, what was going on in Spain with, uh, with the green job policy. And what we find in Spain was that we have produced some green jobs 
and we reported it, but we create this green jobs thanks to a green rain. This green rain produced a green bubble, and this green bubble can be summarized in uh, some 30, almost, well, uh, 28.6 billion euros uh, committed to the support of renewables uh, by the end of 2008. This was in our study. Uh, about 50,000 green jobs. Uh, this was more than half a million euros per job created. Um, and uh, if you look at the capitalization uh, per worker in society, it uh, leads, to the, to, leads to the conclusion that for every job created, 2.2, at least 2.2 jobs were destroyed in the rest of the economy because these financial resources were taken away from the rest of the economy in order to subsidize this investment. So after publishing the study, uh, we have some reactions. Uh, some people said that, and some many <coughs> journals said that we were unpatriotic and we should be treated as unpatriotic people even going as far as saying that our passport should be taken away because of uh, working against the country. Uh, some other newspaper uh, had a very, did some very interesting uh, um, research and they found out that I was the man who was pulling the string in an international, an international conspiracy of neoliberal uh, institutions, so I was coordinating, for example, Heritage Foundation, I was coordinating Atlas Foundation, uh, together with uh, News Corporation, uh, Wall Street Journal, and of course, coordinating ex-president Jose Maria Snar with uh, uh, Francisco Marroquin universities and other great universities in the world. Um, well, we had other reactions, uh, Bill Clinton, um, said, sorry, Bill Clinton said <laughs> that uh, when he came to Spain to speak about uh, the future and technology, and he said he changed his subject of his talk and he started speaking about our study. And uh, at a point in the, in the conference, he said, So now there is a study, as I said earlier, that you are going to deal with in Spain. And uh, also our politicians were not very happy with our conclusions. And uh, for example, the Secretary uh, of State for Climate Change and, uh, and, 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 environment, uh, and Environment said uh, sent a letter to the Chairman of U.S. House of Representatives, Representatives saying that uh, our study was based on data that from unknown sources. Well, our study, if you look at our study, every time we give a data, the source is there. So uh, we were very surprised by this. They also say something that uh, I'm going to talk about now. Is they say that we only look at the short term. We don't look at the future. This has been one of the main claims. OK, this might be true right now, <laughs> but we are looking at the future. You're looking at the present and the past. OK, also we received a response from the NREAL, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Uh, which was, we were very surprised because it was the first time in history that the uh, US, uh, yeah, um, uh, US um, how can I, center, official center, public center, uh, did a report to criticize an academic report from a different country about the energy in a different country. We were very, very uh, glad to, to see how much attention uh, we received. And this, uh, in this report, they mainly say two things. One is that they do not agree with our methodology. They didn't like the, um, the, the, the opportunity cost analysis. They said opportunity cost is not, uh, is, is not the good approach. The good approach is uh, input-output tables. So Leontief methodology, which according to Leontief itself was produced in order to help central planning. So, okay, <laughs> fair enough. You, you prefer this, it's normal that you're in a, in a US state agency. Uh, and the second um, criticism was that we, don't, we were not looking into the future again. 
Here there is uh, thanks to Christopher Horner from uh, CEI. Uh, he plays the um, uh, Freedom of Information Act request, and uh, we receive uh, some thousand pages of emails from uh, from this uh, uh, NREAL explaining why they did this uh, report. And it was very interesting that the people that were attacking us from being paid from uh, by the by the um, big oil corporations, by the way. The journalists who did this chart where I am pulling the strings around the world went to Texas in order to get a certificate where ExxonMobil would say, yes, we put money in this study, and they received a certificate saying, no, we don't know, we don't know this guy, we didn't put any dollar. But it's, it's interesting that uh, looking at their emails, you can see that uh, the whole study was prepared by the, the renewable lobby. Um, and here you can see the email where the renewable lobby is telling the National Renewable Energy Laboratory if they would like to join efforts with them. Also, the Spanish renewable lobby was there. Uh, also, thanks to these emails, we discovered that there were some problems between this the, inside this coalition. And in fact, uh, part of the coalition was telling the people who, who did the report against us that if anything, this annual bullet point shows that the United States should expect a worse return measured in jobs creation from its own subsidies to renewable, since annual explains in the quotation above that uh, the good thing in Spain is that in Spain we come first, so we are producing the technology for the rest of the world, that the rest of the world is going to buy our technology. And they were recognizing this. They were saying that we didn't pay too much attention to this point. So the problem was that we didn't look into the future. Um, unfortunately enough, uh, now it's one year and three months after we released the study, so we can look already into the future, what has happened in this year and three months. And what has happened is <clears throat> that the bubble has grown. The bubble has continued growing and uh, in a way that uh, in Year 2000, our study went until the end of 2008. In year 2009, the public aid to renewable cost more than twice the whole national electricity production. Jeez. Twice the whole production of energy in Spain. The whole. All what Spanish companies and, and homes produce during the year cost half the amount that the government had to subsidize the renewable energy. The unitary cost of the renewable energies was 3.3 times the unitary cost of, of the rest of the energies. And the rate deficit, the rate deficit is the difference between the cost of energy, well, the, the price of energy in the pool, uh, in the wholesale pool, and the price at which companies have to sell to the con final consumer because the, the government put, uh, place a cap, uh, was uh, 4.6 billion last year, uh, creating a huge debt added to the debt of previous years. And the supply, the, the, the public aid to renewables during the same year was 6 billion. Only solar and, only solar and wind was 4.5 billion during the year. So here we have, and this is a chart from the government uh, released a couple of weeks ago, here we have the price of electricity plus 77 percent between 1998 and uh, 2009. And here is the price in wholesale and production. So how do you explain this difference? Well, even the government now is saying that the difference can only be explained by the subsidies and the high cost of renewable, because all the other factors uh, defeat themselves, I mean, uh, compensate themselves, it's only the high cost of renewables, what explains this difference between the declining cost of, uh, of, of, of energy production in Spain and the high cost of energy uh, sold to the cons final consumer. Here you have another, an additional chart from the government also explaining how the cost is going up, the cost of uh, renewable energy. The uh, yellow is solar, green is uh, wind. And here, uh, another chart where uh, you have the, the, the primes, the, the, the extra money that the government is, has to pay every year to the renewables. Here you have 2009. This is wrong because it's only till September. The final uh, uh, data till December was th uh, 6 billion. 
So somewhere here. You. So do we have good news also in the future? Did we have during the year? Well, they claim that we have two good news. One is, oh, sorry for the, the note here. Oh, I don't know how to take it away. But uh, we had a record. The record was that during one day, for example, half of the electricity in Spain was produced by wind energy. And everybody was very happy about the record uh, because we reached 50%. But of course, if you are subsidizing every uh, gigawatt, every kilowatt, uh, you have to look at how much did this night cost. And this night, if you calculate the amount that was produced during this record night, was 6.5 million euros one night subsidies in order to have this record. Uh, another good news is that we were very, very productive. Our solar uh, industry was extremely productive until we discovered that uh, our, it was so productive that we were producing during the night solar energy. <laughs> um, the government is now trying to, to understand exactly who was generating electricity through generators, putting it into the, 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 the panel grid. So right now, the, 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 we calculated a couple of years ago, well, one and a half year ago, that the total money committed to this uh, policy was 30 billion, as I said. Uh, the government now is recognizing that the total amount one year later is nearly 100 billion. And not 100 billion Zimbabwe's money, but 100 billion <laughs> euros. So this is a very, very high, uh, in, in the next 25 years. So even the government wants to, wants to burst the bubble right now. And uh, Minister, Minister Sebastian, uh, despite of all the rhetorics against us, uh, has been um, uh, moving forward to, to reduce subsidies and try to, to, to stop this huge bubble from continuing growing. Uh, this is a royal decree a, couple, a few months ago where the government recognized only, always, only in the official papers that the rate deficit mainly caused by the feed-in uh, feed tariff system to support uh, renewable energies is deeply harming the system and puts at risk not only the financial situation of electricity sector companies but also sustainability of the system itself. This disadjustment turns out to be unsustainable and has grave consequences since it deteriorates the security and financial capacity of the investment necessary to provide electricity at the levels of quality and security that the Spanish society demands. Um, so we have had in the uh, last few months also many close downs. BP has closed down the two factories they had in Spain. Uh, Gamesa last week closed down another factory. And uh, they're building factories in China, for example, something that they said two years ago that it was not possible to produce in China and bring to Europe. And well, and conclusion, are green jobs policy helping the economy? Well, uh, I would say that uh, in Spain we have right now a, over 20% unemployment rate and this policy has only helped uh, this increase of unemployment and we have an 11% public de uh, deficit, uh, 110 billion, uh, that uh, this policy has only helped this deficit to increase. Uh, President Obama called Zapatero last week and said, uh, you should cut this, 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 deficit, this debt. And I would say, yes, you're right, Obama. Uh, think of what's happening in countries like Spain. <laughs>